So the same thing kind of always happens when a new phone is announced. The media gets the device ahead of time, maybe a couple days, a couple weeks if we're lucky, and we get to use it while we're preparing our review. Then the date and time of the press embargo arrives, the embargo lifts, everybody posts their review at once, and it is a giant, big frenzy of activity. There's commenters going nuts and defenders and attackers, and it's just a huge explosion for about a day. And then everything disappears. I mean, sure, there's follow-up coverage and stuff as people find bugs. People have other stuff to say about the devices. They, they wear them in over the course of a, of a day or so. But really, nobody ever goes back and revisits these devices after that initial blast of, of review to see how they feel after a couple weeks. So let's do something about it. Let's take a look at one of this year's surprising success stories, the phone-tablet hybrid, Samsung's Galaxy Note 2. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is Episode 9 of After the Buzz. Now, the Galaxy Note 2 isn't an old device. In fact, it just launched the other day on Verizon Wireless, America's largest network. But it was announced back at IFA in August, and it was released in September. That's a long time in tech years, especially with the holiday season coming up. So how has the Galaxy Note 2 held up? Not surprisingly, since it's still a relatively new product, this hardware still turns heads everywhere. At the barbershop the other day, my haircut was delayed for about five minutes while I answered questions about my Sprint Galaxy Note 2. With no other competition in the phablet space, the big, beefy casing of the Note 2 stands out in a big way. If you're one of those folks who likes to get noticed, look no further. People will ask you about this device in public. A lot. One of the things that might not age as well on the physical side is the device's design. Now this is all taste dependent, but look at the device next to some smartphones that have landed since the Note 2 debuted. As we've said before, Samsung basically just blew up the design of the Galaxy S3 and squared off its more bulbous teardrop elements. The result is a plain looking device that relies almost entirely on its size and S Pen stylus to stand out from the crowd. But the build quality is good and it's withstood quite a few drops and knocks with very little scratching. Speaking of that S Pen, we loved it in our original review, and we still enjoy it today. But unless you're buying the device specifically to take advantage of pen input, you'll probably find yourself using it less often as the days go by. When you do have a couple hands free to take it out and use the device to its full potential though, the S Pen continues to highlight the Note 2's advanced capabilities. Of course, an S Pen is nothing without a display to write on, and we still like the Note 2's panel. Display enthusiasts, though, will want to take note that the 1080p revolution is upon us. The 5.5-inch screen on the Note 2 delivers 720p resolution, but its pixel density isn't top-notch at 267 ppi, and its overblown color saturation compares unfavorably with newer technologies, like the Droid DNA's SLCD3 display. It's still a beautiful screen, and at the greater distance from the eye you're going to be using it at, it's perfectly wonderful, but if you've used a 1080p display, the differences will be apparent. If you haven't, you probably won't mind at all. On the flip side of that resolution equation is endurance. The 3100 milliamp hour pack inside the Galaxy Note 2 is already a mega-sized battery, and its performance blows away that of the batteries powering higher resolution devices. The fact that it's removable, allowing swapping with a fresh battery away from home, is also a huge bonus. Wrapping up the hardware side of things, the speaker continues to impress us with its bassy, loud tones, and the camera is quite nice. More on that in software in a second. The only hardware feature that consistently got under my skin was the power standby button, which is a little easier to press than I would like. But let's face it, when you're picking nits that small, you know you've got a great hardware story to tell overall. But you can't talk Galaxy Note without talking software. How is Samsung's TouchWiz Nature UX holding up over time? In short, very well indeed. The TouchWiz UI layer adds the usual wait time to Android updates, and our Sprint unit here is still on Jellybean 4.1.1. In exchange, though, you get the full suite of software improvements that Samsung has bundled into TouchWiz, like notification shade, utility toggles, Samsung-specific widgets, and all the S Pen-specific enhancements like hovering and quick memo. 
More importantly, there's also support for Samsung's innovative multi-screen, allowing two apps to run at the same time on the display, as well as pop-up browser and pop-up play for more lightweight multitasking. Even multi-screen's side dock is handy in itself as an additional app dock. These are really the headlining software features of the Galaxy Note 2 because they let the device live up to its full potential. They bring in the tablet functionality that makes it a phablet, not just a comically oversized smartphone. Once you learn to use them, they are incredibly useful features, and you miss them when leaving the device behind for another. The Samsung modifications to the camera suite continue to impress, and they work in concert with some excellent hardware to produce some truly solid images that hold their own just fine against competing devices, both indoor and outdoor. In fact, Samsung's Galaxy S3 and Galaxy Note 2 camera their identical hardware and nearly identical software are near the top of the pile, in my opinion, for consumer smartphone optics. All this customization generally results in a fair amount of lag on most devices, and it is possible to slow the Galaxy Note 2 down at spots, but you really have to try. If you have some third-party apps like HD widgets loaded, you can induce stutter on the widget menu, and Chrome will occasionally bog down, though that's probably more due to Chrome than anything else. I include this only in the spirit of completeness, though. TouchWiz has been a lag-free oasis even since Ice Cream Sandwich on high-end Samsung hardware, and that continues with Jelly Bean on the Galaxy Note 2. In our full review, we gave the Galaxy Note 2 a 9 out of 10. Now that's one of the highest scores we've ever given a device, and the Note 2 continues to earn that praise. From its multitasking, to its S Pen add-ons, to its battery life, to its voice quality, to its data speeds, to its processing horsepower, this thing is still a beast. A powerhouse. A hybrid product that aspires to be both a very good smartphone and a very good tablet. And unlike many other hybrid products, the Galaxy Note 2 continues to succeed at playing both roles. For the right buyer, we continue to fully recommend it. Everyone, thank you for watching After the Buzz Episode 9 for the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. We hope you enjoyed it, hope you found it useful. If so, please leave us a thumbs up here on YouTube. If you have something to say to us, please leave a comment on the post at pocketnow.com. Follow us on Twitter so you don't miss all the new updates. Pocket Now Tweets is the official account. My account is at Captain2Phones. That's Captain, the number two, phones, if you're interested in following me. And be sure and visit us at pocketnow.com for much more coverage on the Galaxy Note 2 and all Android, Windows Phone, and iOS devices in the days, weeks, and months ahead. In the meantime, thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. And it launched in September. That's a long time in tech years. F you notifications. F you. But thank you for the retweet, whoever you were. Sorry, buddy. Last time.